My childhood was full of wonder and curiosity. My memories are of years spent exploring, up trees, in the bush, by the sea, a classic Kiwi upbringing. It's fitting then that a lovely class of children in New Plymouth recently renamed my impossibly long job title to Queen of Curiosity. Like all humans, those seeds of asking questions were there for me from the very beginning, and I've never stopped asking them. The eye-opener for me was discovering the amazing way our cells and DNA work as an undergraduate student, and then linking the knowledge I gained back to my love of marine life, especially fish and shellfish in Antarctic waters in my research career as a scientist. Now, it's my very fortunate role to support that same lifelong curiosity in others. The world we live in is changing fast. We are in a time of complex issues facing us and our planet, and science is essential to addressing these global problems. Yet there is often mistrust or a lack of understanding around science and what it offers. How then do scientists like me connect others with science and help build curious minds to create a brighter future. Media and online stories, TV documentaries and magazine articles can all reach large audiences. The flip side is that these methods may not lead to true engagement as they are relatively passive. Research suggests that they often don't lead to behaviour change, in this case an increase in science understanding. What can be more effective instead for raising science literacy is a reaching less is more approach where the links between science, scientists and citizens are on a more personal level and longer lasting. Citizen science, where individuals can be involved in scientific research together with scientists, is one entry point by which anyone can discover and be involved with science. People are most familiar with the type of citizen science where non-scientists are involved in projects during data collection or analysis. This might involve people coming to a place on a certain day to count animals, insects or plants. It also might involve people counting things like penguins and photos on their own computer or scientists making use of many people's computer processing power to crunch large data sets. There is, though, another type of extreme citizen science called participatory science, where non-scientists are involved right from the idea stage of a research project and at every step of the entire process through to communicating and sharing the results. Imagine this scenario. A community group comes up with an idea for a project that means something to local people and involves science. They tell their idea to a local organisation in charge of helping make community science happen, and their idea is found to have merit. The local organisation helps the community group find the right scientists and other groups or schools to work with if they don't already have a team and they form a partnership. It could also be seeded the other way by the scientists. Then they fill out an application form and because it's a cool idea, they get funding to work on it as the start of a long-term relationship and to make a real difference in their community. Imagine what a great way of doing science this would be. This idea is now being piloted in New Zealand and is known as the Participatory Science Platform or PSP. PSP is a key part of something called A Nation of Curious Minds, which is a new government programme to help all New Zealanders get involved with science and technology. I am incredibly excited to be the national coordinator for the PSP, or Queen of Curiosity, as I believe this is a game changer for how we do science in New Zealand and globally. Although similar methods have been used elsewhere, this is the world's first government-led and nationally coordinated participatory science approach. Other countries will be watching what we do. What makes this different from other citizen science methods is the full connection with the community right from the beginning. It must be meaningful to them. Co-creating is essential to the success of these projects. 
The way in which these projects are designed also has a unique mix. Sir Peter Gluckman, the Prime Minister's Chief Science Advisor, talks about the three-legged stool, where initiatives must equally lay out good science, be locally relevant and include the community, but also must involve excellent learning opportunities. This is where that idea of true engagement or connection comes in. To lift science literacy, we also need to look at how we allow two-way learning. There are three diverse regions trialling the PSP, South Auckland, Taranaki and Otago. In each, there's an organisation rolling out the pilot in their region, and each region has brought their own flavour to how they do this. At its heart, mentorship to applicants plays a key part in how we roll out this pilot and makes the PSP very different from other funding opportunities here and elsewhere. Right now, it's a very exciting time for our pilot. We have several projects up and running and many more under development. A project where school students tested their own homes for mould and then reported their findings back to the community. Not only did they find lots of mould, but also potentially dangerous yeast and antibiotic resistant bacteria. There are stream cleanup projects and another lot of projects mapping out biodiversity. From understanding what moths are found across Otago and whether artificial lights like street lamps affect them, to learning more about the Taranaki bat population, with students also designing and testing artificial roost boxes to find out which ones the bats prefer. A group is looking at the impact of drinking kava in the Tongan community. Another is seeing whether sediment dredging disturbs marine life in Otago Harbour. In Taranaki there are several marine projects, with one looking at offshore reefs. And this one has been developed by the South Taranaki Scuba Club, teaming up with a fishing club, iwi and schools. Projects even extend to preschool aged children. For example, a group of early childhood centres are helping develop an air quality measurement tool simple enough to be used and understood by a preschooler. These are all really inspiring projects and they all have community ownership. Having a nationally led approach means the collective experience of all of these projects can be used to create real change through public participation.